What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're gonna be installing power fold mirrors on the Golf R. All right, so in my quest to make this Golf R really a little bit better than I think the way it should have came from the factory, we're gonna be installing power fold mirrors. Now, in the US, this is not like a super amazing upgrade, just to simply have your mirrors fold up in, in Europe and places around the world that have really tiny roads or really tiny parking spots, a must have feature I would say here. Honestly, let's be honest about this. This is pretty much just for cool factor as far as I'm concerned. However, it's still a pretty awesome mod and I do think the car should have came with it from the factory. It's basically the same assembly, but with a motor inside to rotate the mirror up. And these actually have a puddle light right about there, puddle light right there. So we're gonna have to code that as well. This is a pretty straightforward and easy install. We're gonna remove both door panels. We're gonna to have to fish a little bit of cabling. We're gonna install the mirror housing itself. And then we're gonna to have to go back and code to tell the car that, hey, we got powerful mirrors and puddle lights. Now this kit came from a man, Paul, over at ShopDap. I think retail on this is about 500 bucks. So it's not a cheap upgrade, but still one that is pretty awesome. I think also, if you're doing this at this point, and you wanna do those dynamic turn signals where it sort of streaks across the turn signal assembly, this is a great time to do it because you're gonna have all of this apart. Anyway, my car also has blind spot monitoring, so you need to pay attention to make sure you get the right one. Is it blind spot monitoring? You're gonna need the $500 kit. If it's not blind spot monitoring, you can save a couple bucks and get that kit. But of course, of course, I got blind spot monitoring, so we're gonna have to use the high dollar ones. Now, this is, again, pretty straightforward. There's a couple of places you really, really, really gotta pay attention. One, removing the mirror glass. I've removed a lot of mirror glass in my career, had very good luck with it, I've only broken a couple of them over the years. I'm gonna show you how I do it. The other thing is removing the door panel. There is a light behind the door handle that if you don't be super careful when removing the door panel, odds are you're gonna break it. Now, if you break it, you got two choices. You can actually just like tape it or uh, glue it or even use something like caulk to hold it back in and that's fine Obviously not the preferred thing, but it does work You can get this light bar from Aliexpress if you want to do that I think both of them were like $35 But uh, another option, but if we can be a little bit more careful and not spend the 35 bucks I am all about it first up. We got to remove our door panel There are two screws that hold the door panel in one quarter turn fastener down at the bottom and a series of clips along the outer edges. All right, this should pop off pretty easily. At the top inner edge, there's a small recessed section that we're going to start with our plastic trim tool on and pry against. You can use a screwdriver here if you really feel like you need to. We just wanna be careful and not mar up any plastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our trim tool, we're gonna to insert it in this little slot here and just kind of work our way around it. The biggest thing you wanna pay attention to is right here, this little clip likes to break. This clip snaps right into this little hole here. This likes to break, so you wanna be gentle when you're prying here. You almost wanna push in and kinda of twist clockwise to release that clip. All right, next let's remove that T30 that is behind this door handle here. The next T30 is right underneath where the window switches are below the armrest. You'll need a little bit longer T30 for this one. After you remove this T30, we have to go down to the bottom of the door panel right behind where the reflector is. There's a small fastener. You're gonna, you wanna use a 10 millimeter wrench for this. And all that is is just a plastic quarter turn. All right, next we are going to remove the rest of the door panel. There are trim clips about here, 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 and here. Now the one up in this top corner on the four door cars is a crash clip. So we actually need to lift it up and out rather than just try and yank it forward. There's a trim tool kit that VW recommends in order to do this job. This is what it looks like. You can get them from vw.snapon.com or I got these on Amazon. All three of them were like 20 bucks. Of course, I'll link that up for you. Take our trim tool, pull away on the door just a little bit, work our way up, find the clip and pull it away. You'll feel the tool stop when you get right on the clip. You're probably gonna have to put a pretty good amount of pressure on this to get the clip off the first time. They're on there pretty tight. Then we'll just work our way up the inner door panel. There we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom trim clip and the middle trim clip up here. 
All right, that actually popped both clips. So we got the clips on the outer edge of the door all loose and happy. Now there's a clip right here that rather than pulling away, we have to lift the door panel up. We need to be extra careful because we don't want to break the light bar behind the door handle or rip any of the wiring connectors out. Can't stress it enough. Got to be extra careful here. What we're going to do, we're just going to very carefully, very carefully, very carefully pull the door panel away and gently lift up. And then we can take it at the top of the door and pull it up over the seal and then pull it really only like an inch or so away. And you need to hold it because now what we got to do is reach behind the door panel and get all the wiring connectors unplugged. Little trick you can use if you have a rolly chair, roll it right underneath the door panel. Then what we can do is we can just rest the door panel on the chair and it's suspended like magic. So we can go around to the other side and get the connectors unplugged. All right, so we have our door here and our panel over here. And as you can see, we got a bunch of connectors that we're gonna need to unplug. So we have the door lock switch, the mirror switch, the alarm indicator light right here. These two connectors look like they're on a junction, so we might just be able to disconnect this one. The mirror switch and the door latch. The connector that's probably gonna give you the hardest time is the one for the window switches. As you can see, there's this purple lock on it right here. When it's installed in the car and all plugged in, we actually have to slide this lock up off the connector so that we can push the release in. Because you're working in tight quarters and it's kind of hidden, this can be tricky. So just do your best. Be careful not to break that connector. But once we have everything disconnected, we can pull the door panel away. And now we have exposure to all of our goodies inside the door. With everything exposed, we have access to our door module. This is where we're gonna plug in our new powerful mirror. Now the repair manual tells you to take the speaker out, which means we've got to drill four rivets out and re-rivet the speaker in. This is dumb, don't do it this way. We can do it without messing with the speaker because, well, I think a riveted speaker is dumb to begin with, but whatever, it doesn't matter how I feel about it. Before we take the other mirror off, what I want to do is I want to take and I want to plug in our new one. I want to code it and I want to make sure it works. So we have two connectors we're going to be dealing with when it comes to our mirror. This is the harness for our mirror, the one with the white seal on it. So what we need to do is we need to disconnect this connector here and we need to disconnect this one here. Just like on the window switch, we have another lock we need to release. So pull that away from the connector, squeeze the tab and disconnect it. So now we're disconnected on the old one just with the mirror here in hand. Let's go ahead and plug it in and then do our coding and see what we get. If everything's good and everything works, then we'll go ahead and properly install it. We just don't want to spend a bunch of time and energy in trying to install it and something be sideways. Let's go ahead and make some coding changes so that the car knows that we actually have a power folding mirror. We're going to get our VCDS out. Yes, you can do this with OBD11 as well. We are going to go to driver's door electronics first. We're going to need to change the driver and passenger side doors. Close that. Go to coding, long code helper, pass up these little warning boxes. We're gonna do a couple of things. We wanna look through and we want to find the mirrors. So here, here we go. We're gonna highlight power folding mirror installed and mirror comfort folding active. We want both of those highlighted. Go ahead and exit back, hit do it, confirm. And now our driver's side is coded. Let's go back and do the same thing on address word 52. That's the passenger door. It's going to be exactly the same thing. We're going to go into coding, long coding helper, bypass those warnings, find our mirror. Here we go. Highlight mirror folding installed and mirror comfort folding active. Exit, do it, confirm it, and we're good to go. Now, that is strictly for having the mirrors fold up when you rotate the knob. Let's say we want to go ahead and turn those puddle lights on, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to. It's there. Might as well activate it. We're going to go back into the each door control module, long coding helper. This time, what we want to activate is the front field light active. That is our puddle light. So we need to highlight that. We can just go ahead and confirm quick. Our mirror is still coded. But again, the change we want to make is front field light active. Exit. Do it. 
confirm, and now our puddle light comes on. Do the same thing for the passenger door, coating, long coating helper, bypass our warnings, change our front field light to active, exit, do it, and confirm it. Now both of our puddle lights work. There are other things that we can also do with this coating. If we go into Central Electrics and we go into Adaptations, we can change a bunch of stuff. This is where we're gonna change it to bring up the menu in the MFI or the MMI or the MFD or whatever they call it now so that we can turn the mirrors on and off when, say, we lock the car. If we want the mirrors to fold up automatically when we lock the car, we need to make these changes. Now, for these changes, there are a lot of long German words that you have to change and dig through a ton of these adaptations. Rather than trying to butcher these words and confuse you guys with this, what I'm gonna do is the very top comment of this post, I'm going to put all the things that you need to change. It's about six of them that you need to change because for me it was easier to follow that step by step rather than keeping along in the video. The coding changes are very easy, but these get a little bit squirrely, and I don't want anybody confused changing the wrong thing and messing up something in their car. Also, before you make any of these changes, it is a good idea to run that full scan and save the adaptations and everything on your vehicle. If you're not sure exactly how to do that, I have done a video walking you step by step on how to do that. All right, so we went ahead and coded the mirrors so that they fold in. In order to test them, we have to plug in our new mirror switch that has the fold up option on it. We don't need to put the door panel or anything on. We just simply need to go ahead, plug this guy in, and I'm gonna hold this, and we will rotate our knob around. Ah, it works! How cool is that? Outstanding. So we know that our coating is good on the driver's side. I'm gonna run over and check the passenger side, make sure it works. We can go ahead and install the mirror, swap over the cap and the glass, plug everything in, blow all our faults out, and we'll actually install our new switch in the door panel rather than just letting it hang out right here. Let's go ahead and disconnect our new mirror so that we can get it out of the way. Let's set all this to the side. All right, next we are going to remove the mirror glass and the mirror cap. This is another place where you wanna be super duper careful with what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and tape the housing up. It's not necessary because, well, we're replacing it, but I'd sure rather not mar this up just in case we ever wanna swap this back. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the mirror glass all the way down. So if you were adjusting it with the switch, you'd lower it all the way down. We're gonna take a curved trim tool like this. I like plastic. We're gonna go right behind the glass. We're gonna gently pry. You can also try and get your hands between here and pull it out. If you're gonna do that though, you wanna do even pressure to get it out. It's in there pretty good. You're gonna have to work harder than you really kinda want to. But once it's loose, it should come right out. Sometimes you gotta work it around a little bit more just to get it out. That's why I like to use plastic tools. All right, once we have our mirror glass out, we got three connectors, two for the heaters and one for the blind spot monitoring. We'll go ahead and disconnect the heaters first. Then this is the wire for our blind spot monitoring. Go ahead and just pull the wire gently out of the retainers here and here. Loop it around then pull it straight out, just like that. And we did a good job. We didn't break our glass. Just got it a little fingerprinty. Next up, let's remove the trim cap. There's two tabs that we need to release. One is right here. We're gonna push that one down. Then I like to pull, well, back on the assembly, but forward towards the front of the car on the mirror cap. I like to hold that, then go ahead and push down the other tab more towards the outside of the car. And you may have to do this once or twice in order to get it out. We are gonna reuse the cap, so you wanna be careful with it. Once you have these tabs loose, we can go ahead and pull the mirror cap away towards the front of the car. Back on the inside of the door, it's time to get our wiring harness out. We're gonna have to run the wiring harness back through the door. So what I like to do is use some fishing line. This is pretty high test fishing line. 
what I'm going to do, we have our two connectors. I'm just going to use the tape that's already on there, tape the connectors together, and just tie a knot, pull it through. You want to make sure you tie a good knot so that uh, it doesn't come apart while you're, uh, while you're fishing it through. Make sure that's good and snug. Then when we pull this through the door, it'll pull the fishing line with it. We'll tie the new harness to the fishing line and then pull it back through. We can go ahead and poke our seal through, just like that. There is also another wire loom clip right here underneath the module. Something else that I found helpful is to actually pull this grommet out as well. This way we can get our hand back there a little bit and when we're running our new harness, we can actually clip that green clip back in. We'll go ahead and push this wire loom through a little bit. Next, let's go ahead and take our two T30s out. The mirror should stay put even after we take the screws out. But if you have an extra set of hands, it's not a bad idea to have someone hold it just to make extra sure. Again, we're replacing the whole thing, but we don't want it to slip and fall and hit our car or break in case we maybe want to sell our old ones. We got our loom. Now we simply lift the mirror assembly up and gently pull it because we're feeding our wires through. Let's get our new mirror put back in. Here's our connectors for our new housing. I'm gonna actually tape these up to make it a little easier to feed through the door. Tape these guys together. This tape will be coming right back off. If you don't test it before installing it, you don't need to do this because they're actually already taped from the factory. Then what we'll do is we'll grab our fishing line, we'll snip it, Make sure you hold it so it doesn't fall back in the door. Just like we did pulling it out, tie a knot. Then we can just go ahead, make sure we don't have our wire loom twisted at all. We can go ahead and feed it down the door. Then grab through the opening, the other side of your fishing line, and just kind of nurse it back in. You may need to assist it a little bit with like that grommet there. You don't want to pull super aggressive or anything. Just nice and easy, take your time here as you get it through. Go ahead and put your mirror in. And we're just gonna kind of set that there. Shouldn't go anywhere, hopefully anyway. Sometimes that last little bit is the hardest part. Be careful with the wires here too. You don't wanna damage any wiring. Let's go ahead and pull that through. Pull our grommet into place. Ah, so easy with, so easy with the fishing line. Now we need to get our little green retainer here back into place. This is where I'll put my hands through this grommet, find it, it's pretty easy to find, it's like right there. And then yeah, push it through, see it popped in right there. Wiggle your hand out. Let's go ahead and lose our fishing line here. Snip it, untie it, do whatever you want. Move this gooba tape that we put on. We'll go ahead and plug our mirror in. Get both connectors plugged in. Let's go ahead and get this grommet back into place. Find that when dealing with these, it's easiest to get the grommet all the way out and then go ahead and put it back in. But this wasn't a necessary step to take this out. I just feel like it makes it a little easier. And anything, any of this stuff beats unriveting the speaker. That's just silly. All right, so. Grommet, grommet, retainer, plug, plug. We're all good there. Let's go ahead and bolt our mirror assembly up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take out this switch assembly right here. There's four white tabs that we need to pop out in order to get that piece off. Usually what I do is I'll put a little bit of outward pressure on the whole assembly. And that way as we pop the clips, it comes out a little easier. There we go. Here is our switch assembly. This is our old one. So here's the one we're going to be installing. You see it's got our power fold section right there. We need to transfer over our lock unlock button, grab our pocket screwdriver, and there's just these little tabs that we need to push. And the switch is going to come out the back of the housing. So if you're gonna apply pressure, put your thumb on it like this and push it back. That'll just slide right out. Sometimes these like to come apart, so be careful with them. We'll take our new housing, we'll make sure that we install the switch the right way. That looks right to me, just like that. 
And then we'll go ahead and snap it in. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. Now what we can do is we can install this piece back in the door panel. For that, I find that it's actually just easier to flip the door panel over and snap it in this way. There we go, just like that. Fix our OCD and leave it there. All right, let's get this put all back together. We will start with our cap. This is a good time to clean this, by the way, while it's off. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's make sure our turn signals work before we put all this back together. All right, good. Just one more, one more little check before we make a bad choice. All right, so this slides in from the front to the back. We want to sort of set it in place. Make sure it's lined up. If you don't get this installed right, you may end up with some wind noise, so make sure it goes in right. Next, let's get our mirror glass on. We'll start with our driver assist. Go ahead and get that plugged in. They give you a little picture of the way it's supposed to go, just in case you forget. That's nice of them. You may need something to just press this in the rest of the way. Just be careful. There we go. And then remember it went around and then in this channel. The nice thing about the old one is it had that memory that wires tend to get. This is all new, so it doesn't quite have the memory that uh, the old one did. It didn't go well. There we go. You need to make sure you get this in right. Otherwise, you run the risk of like pinching the wires if you move the mirror. We don't want that choice. And then we'll go ahead and put our heater wires back on. If I remember right, the blue one was the one closer to the outside of the vehicle. Make sure that goes in all the way. And the red and black one was the other one, of course. We need to make sure our wires are all out of the way. We need to center the mirror in the housing and then evenly, keyword evenly, push it in and it should make that exact noise. Now before we put the door panel on, let's move the mirror and make sure that it works too. Now a couple of things before we put our door panel back on. We need to make sure that our trim clips are all set. If you look at this trim clip right here, we'll just go ahead and take it out. You can see how it's popped up. If it's not popped up and there's a big gap right here, then you need to reset it which you can just do by sliding your trim tool right between this spot right here. We also want to make sure that we plug everything back in before snapping our door panel back on. So we'll set our door panel on our rolly chair. All right, once we got everything plugged in on the door panel, it's time to go ahead and put it back on. We need to make sure we get the lip of the door panel into the seal on the door. So it has to kind of come up, slide down, and then we snap it into place. And I usually like to stand at the back so I can see, see it go into the seal. Push that down. I look at the back side along back here to make sure that I can see the clips line up and then snap it into place. There should be next to no gap between the panel and the door the whole way around. Go ahead and do our quarter turn at the bottom. Then we'll put our T30s in. Snap our door handle trim back on. Make sure your wires are still tucked where they belong, by the way. Now for this, it actually works better if you put this edge in first and then Snap that in. All right, so we got all of our coatings and adaptations changed. Check this out. Ah, so cool. Automatic. And then when we unlock it, this works the same with the handle or the remote. They fold out. Then right before we open the door, our puddle light comes on. Let's check the other side just to make sure. Go ahead and lock it. Try not to wear these motors out. Good to go. Unlock it. 
Boom. And our puddle light comes on. Outstanding, guys. What a cool feature. Again, something I truly believe that the car should have had from the factory. However, it didn't, so we get to add it. All I gotta do is get my grubby fingerprints off these mirrors, readjust them when I get back in the car, and we're done. As always, if you have questions or comments, drop them down below. I will put links to everything we use today, as well as that top comment, I'll pin it, for the other adaptation changes that you wanna do if you wanna make it do stuff like this, which I think is super awesome. If you don't wanna do it, you can bypass that. Big ups to ShopDat for hooking up the parts for this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.